Hi everyone, uh, my name is Grace. I am actually Christine Erlinson's postdoc. Um, so today I'll be presenting on strength and lean mass responses to exercise in aging adults with HIV. I don't need to reiterate this too much to the people in this room, but people with HIV develop additional comorbidities at an accelerated rate compared to uninfected controls. And this figure from, that I pulled from Shoten and colleagues just visually demonstrates uh, the differing levels of comorbid burden compared to the uninfected controls. But as Dr. Erlinson just touched on too, exercise is a safe and effective method of improving risk factors associated with comorbidity development in HIV. And it does so by improving muscle mass and quality, aerobic capacity, physical function, and there are some studies to show that it can help improve CD4 count as well in people with HIV. But congruent with multiple types of treatment, not everyone receives the same benefits of exercise despite being in identical programs. And so this NIA workshop that was completed back in April of 2022 kind of underscored the need to identify different variables or clinical characteristics that could potentially explain the heterogeneity in exercise response. Um, and so they kind of discussed that identifying these variables or potential clinical characteristics could help clinicians or other exercise specialists better dose and better individualize exercise programs in the future to overall maximize the benefits of exercise. And they showed some of these variables summarized in this nice schematic designed here, which I won't go into great detail on, but it is an interesting paper if you would like to read it. So our group decided to start looking at the heterogeneity and exercise response in older adults with HIV. And we did so by analyzing the study that Christine just mentioned, um, but we descriptively analyzed data from the Exercise for Healthy Aging study, that should say 2014, but it ran from 2014 to 2017. Um, and enrolled sedentary older adults with and without HIV, who then completed a 24-week supervised aerobic and resistance exercise program. And this is just an overview of the study design that I'll just touch on briefly again, but essentially all participants for the first 12 weeks performed moderate intensity aerobic and resistance training, and then they were randomized to either progress up to higher intensity aerobic and high intensity resistance training, or continue the moderate level intensity. And it, the study took multiple study outcomes, but the purpose, or the, this presentation will just focus on the one repetition, maximum bench press, leg press, grip strength, time to complete 10 chair rises, and total and appendicular lean mass by DEXA. To perform the responder analysis, we defined responder criteria with the minimally clinically important difference that we identified in the literature. And then we explored baseline characteristics among these defined responder groups. And I will say that before I get too much into the results, we didn't have a large enough sample size to run tests of statistical uh, difference. And so any comments I make on just differences between the groups is just based on an observed difference. Um, frailty was defined using Freed's criteria and sarcopenia was defined using Baumgartner's criteria. So then more specifics on the responder criteria. Um, we defined respond, and starting with the strength response first, uh, we defined responders as having to meet or exceed the MCID of either of these two outcomes in both uh, the first arm of the study and the second arm of the study. And non-responders were defined as not meeting this MCID threshold in either outcome in either arm of the study. This does leave out a lot of participants in the middle that may have improved in one arm and not the other, but for the purpose of this presentation, we just kept it to these two groups here. And then these are the MCID thresholds that we identified for lower extremity strength. For the lean mass criteria, we did something similar, but we defined that the MCID we found to be a 2% change over from baseline to 24 weeks in total lean mass and or appendicular lean mass normalized for height. And so again, a responder was defined as meeting or exceeding that 2% threshold. A non-responder did not meet that threshold. And we actually have a third group, which was a negative responder, and they decreased in one of these two measures by at least 2% from baseline to 24 weeks. So now looking at some of the results in the demographics by strength response, starting with the lower extremity uh, strength response here first. And so we had 12 responders and seven non-responders. 
Um, again, very small sample size of the non-responders, but the age was pretty similar. That should also say median IQR. Um, but there were 58% of the responders were HIV positive, and they did have a higher median VAX index, which is indicative of a higher comorbid burden at baseline, and you can also see that reflected down below in some of the baseline comorbidities. For upper extremity strength, we had 23 responders and we had one non-responder, um, which is great for the purpose of what EHA was, but not as great for the purpose of this analysis. Um, but this one non-responder was a control participant um, and they did have uh, several comorbidities as listed down below. Looking at the demographics by lean mass response, we had 28 responders, 16 non-responders, and we had 11 negative responders. Uh, the non-responder group was the oldest out of the three, and the negative responder group was the youngest. The HIV status was pretty evenly split among these three groups here. Um, but one thing I do want to point out that we found was interesting was in the Exercise for Healthy Aging study, there were uh, five total people with sarcopenia at baseline, and four out of those five people we saw um, improved their lean mass from baseline to 24 weeks, which was good. And although one individual did not quite meet this MCID threshold criteria, um, nobody with less lean mass classified at baseline ended up losing more as a result of our intervention. And so looking at it by the um, strength and mass responder by exercise intensity, it's pretty evenly split for the strength group, but again, very small sample size, so a little hard to speculate there. But when we look at lean mass, we saw that eight out of the 11 negative responders, so about 70% of this group, um, was actually randomized to the high intensity uh, portion of the study. And kind of similar to what Christine was just discussing um, in her last presentation, but we thought that this may be because when we looked at the baseline body composition measures by lean mass response, the negative responder group were act had the highest anthropological measurements at baseline. And so we are hypothesizing that it's potentially combined with the highest baseline body composition measures plus the facilitation of higher intensity training. This group may have lost overall weight and also lost lean mass as a result. Um, exploring the total weight loss of this group will be something that we do in the future. I don't have those results right now. And then finally, we looked at change in IL-6, which is an inflammatory marker. Um, first by strength response, again, I would take this with a grain of, big grain of salt because of the sample size, um, but the one non-responder for upper extremity strength had an increase in IL-6 from baseline to week 24 by about 200%, but again, based off of one individual. And then the lower extremity strength, responders saw an increase, non-responders saw a decrease, and that's not entirely what we would expect, but um, limited by sample size here. But then when we looked at change in IL-6 by lean mass response, we actually found that the negative responders and non-responders had an increase in IL-6 from baseline to week 24, and respond, this responder group had a little bit of a decrease. And this was particularly interesting to us because the baseline values of IL-6 were pretty similar. And so we don't know if it's you know, potentially something with their lifestyle differences that's causing this increase from like over the course of the intervention or if potentially the exercise is inducing this inflammatory response in some individuals, but this is consistent with the literature in that there's an association with higher IL-6 and less lean mass. Um, limitations, very small sample size, particularly of the non-responders. Um, this was just an exploratory descriptive analysis only, so more of a hypothesis generating for future trials, um, and it was an unplanned retrospective design here. Um, but in summary, among people classified as strength responders, there is a higher percentage of comorbidities at baseline. 70% of the lean mass negative responders were randomized to the high intensity group. Uh, four out of the five people with sarcopenia at baseline improved their lean mass by at least the MCID. And among lean mass negative and non-responders, there was an observed increase in IL-6 from baseline to 24 weeks. Um, and I would like to thank my co-authors, Kathy Jankowski, Melissa Wilson for doing the stats, and Christine Erlinson, my mentor, the Exercise for Healthy Aging study team, all the study participants for working out consistently for four months, and the funding to make it happen.